Oh hi, it's Bukai, and welcome to my video review for World 3 on Eidolon. And don't let my cheerful demeanor fool you on here. This is highly critical, and I actually believe that this update is unacceptable. Utterly, utterly unacceptable. First of all, let's look towards construction on here. The cogs? Yeah, this is all working. Working just fine on there. You can place down your cogs. You can, you know, set your guys to working on different things, and it will add up towards your actual builds. It's pretty, it's decently explained, not really, but you know, I'll make a video guide for that eventually. Eventually is the key word, because considering if you go down to build, these are building. They're slowly going up, but the second I hit build and I log off, there is a very, very high chance that your buildings will just collapse and just no longer exist. Now the buildings are supposed to go along this ledge here, but when you log out, they may cease to exist, meaning the entire point is pointless. You just wasted a bunch of time. You also wasted resources going into that. It's just completely bugged. And Lava's response when he was initially coming out with this, because he knew, he knew before he launched this, that this was a bug. As he sat there inside of his actual live stream for around five to 10 minutes contemplating whether he should listen to the alpha testers and not release it or just release it. And his response was, and this is utterly unacceptable, just don't close the game. Are you serious? You have a game-breaking bug that you claim is just found right away from the actual, like, right before you're launching on there, which I actually call bull on all of these game-breaking bugs that I'm about to be explaining to everybody on here, that there's no way in hell all these game-breaking bugs were found 10 minutes before you were going to launch the server. Utterly, utterly unacceptable. Now, the other thing that I find is unacceptable is your gem shop. If you look at towards the top tier for the actual items inside of the game, you've got, you know, these, your food, your inventory, those aren't the highest of tiers. They actually fall underneath your bonus category. Things like your infinity hammer, your bleach log, uh, your bleach for your actual alchemy, your one that allows you to put multiple guys, basically four of them, four for two worlds. Two each. Not a bad number, not too egregious, not too pay to win. You can slowly earn that with free gems. However, when we look at the actual World 3 shop, it is $300 of these bonuses that are all at the top tier levels for the actual building for the World 3. What? You literally doubled what was in possession for the previous two worlds. So in other words, you're kind of Skinner boxing everyone. You're making this look like it's available for, you know, it's completely free to play and whatnot. It's, you only need to, you know, spend a little bit of money if you want on there. You can earn all the stuff in the game. $300 worth of DLC underneath here, where you buy your gems. That's 300 US dollars. He says, that is insane. All of this is insane. Why did you add so much when your previous worlds had two each, yet you doubled what was in your previous world for being able to buy? And you were already talking in stream about what you wanted to add later on in a cash shop underneath there, further screwing the free-to-play players on there when you've been talking about making this game free-to-play. I This is utterly unacceptable. Just utterly unacceptable. I have no problem with a man that needs to eat. Do not get me wrong. A man needs to eat. I understand that more than most men. Now, the problem is, is that you sold this as free-to-play people can actually, you know, play free-to-play. And, well, unfortunately, you're just proving that this is not the case with this shop. You're making it so that way you need, you need these upgrades and you need to spend. You have created problems and now you are selling solutions. You know what? I should have known it was going to come eventually. All of us should. If you want to spend your money on that, go ahead. I will not stop you, and I don't think anybody should stop you, but I won't be. That's ridiculous. That is utterly ridiculous. I'll unlock them very, very slowly, whether it takes me a year and whatnot, or even maybe never on my main. Just Now to moving on to game-breaking glitch number two. Another reason why I actually call bull when you try to throw your alpha testers underneath when half of them, half of them were telling you that it's not ready for release, and you're making it seem like this was all at the very end. No. He says, if half of your alpha testers are telling you that 
this game is not ready for release, then most likely it is not ready for release. And so let's look towards the prayer glitch, where you can actually lock your character in place and be unable to leave and losing all of the progress that you made. Huzzah! Doesn't that sound like a great glitch? So first of all, you need to buy your actual worship totem in the town and then go down to one of the worship altars. Now the worship altar, the first one that everyone's going to be going to, is all the way down by Glublins. And once you make it down to here, I'm going to be... I'm going to be horrible at this game. Just... Partially on purpose, partially because considering I don't have any constructed towers because of the previously mentioned bug. And so the way it works is you can go to worship or you can go to summon. Summon is essentially the mini game for this on here. And it is the mini game that is completely bugged and broken. Now, you're not doing much damage considering I'm on a low, low, low level. But, you know, my skills can be activated and whatnot. Now, I'm going to kill a couple guys, considering I need to actually reach a certain wave, and, you know, kill some guys on there. It's just quite important to do. Once I, you know, throw up my tornado, and you can see some nice little pathing glitches with the tornado, you can see I'm going to just get up some score, get up on the actual waves, and we're going to run up and down this fine... And now we got a bunch of the small guys, and this is where I'm just going to, you know, let them all run to the totem and just straight up lose on wave 3. Now it's going to be hit into wave 4, points 13, points 15, and we're just going to lose right here on wave 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, touches the actual portal, and boom, totem breaks. Now it's going to reset, and you're going to get another totem, but you can't click on the totem. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to click to go to the portals. You can't click on the portals. Okay, well, I'm going to go up the pine, the vines. You can't click on the vines. You are now stuck. Stuck on this, on this platform alone. And there is nothing you can do besides go back to the player menu. When you go back to the player menu, it will have not registered that you have played this minigame. You are completely 100% stuck in this spot. And when you do go back, it will do nothing for your character you literally need to log out to get rid of this bug you're telling me the alpha testers who've been playing this never found things like this never found all of this until the very end when you notice these come on come on your refinery is also showing to isn't also not showing the right amount that you need to actually upgrade it on there and you were talking about oh yeah you know just save up more and you can eventually unlock it. It's just not telling you the right numbers. That's all. You've got bug after bug after bug after bug and game breaking bugs on this. One after another. This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Because considering all you need to do. I've been in your place. I've been in your situation where... You know, you've given release dates, you've missed release dates, you've given release date, you missed it, you give another one, you miss it, you give another one, you miss it. It is a horrible, horrible feeling. I understand where you are coming from. I fully do. I fully, fully do. And I'm sorry to say it, but... There is a solution to the problem, and it's a lesson I learned, and I learned it too late, and I'm hoping that you can learn it before it becomes too late, because considering Eidolon is a decent game. What you need to do is you finish the patch, you run an alpha, then you let people know the update will come on this date. In other words, you don't release it the second it is finished. You release it a week after it is finished, a week after it is tested, because then you will have not all the bugs. No game is bug-free. It's impossible. Anybody that tells you it's possible to make a bug-free game is lying to you. It is impossible to make a bug-free game. Hell, even Pong, you could probably have bugs in it somewhere, especially with modern coding and bloatware inside of a lot of engines and whatnot. But every game has a bug in it. But you can get rid of the major bugs, the major stuff. Now, which leads me to my other point on here as to... You built this game in Scratch. You've been talking about how you're a solo dev, you're a solo coder, and whatnot. And the only thing I got to say on here is you're using a programming language literally made for children to learn how programming works and logic. 
There's no coding here. This is scripting, and specifically block scripting. It is, according to their website and according to usage, and anybody that's used Scratch will tell you it is made for children. It is made so children can learn to code. It is not made to build these larger games. There are tutorials on there that teach you and show you, and I might even implement one into this video or put a card up at the top that links to a tutorial where someone else is explaining how to build basically your mining minigame on there. And it's very simple. It's drag and drop code blocks. The problem with this is because it's block code, it is pure spaghettification because it's not made to do this. You can, you can keep slamming your head against the wall and building your game in Scratch. You can, you've done it, you've shown you can. The problem with that is it is the equivalent of trying to build a, or make a five course gourmet meal inside of an easy bake oven. I mean, you could technically do it. Technically it's possible, but you're most likely not going to be able to actually properly do it. It's just the nature of the beast. Good luck. And, you know, you're in a rock and a hard place. I understand this. You're at a spot where you need to continue with Eidolon. You can't just go back to square one on, on there, which is what my recommendation would be, which is go back, build it up in Unity from scratch. But the problem is, is you got you have whales in your server. You have whales in my Discord underneath there. You have whales in other Discords. You have guys that are spending hundreds. I've spent about about a hundred dollars on this game in the past, and you've got guys that have spent thousands and continue to spend hundreds. You're talking a lot of money, which means you need to hire someone that either knows how to go through a lot of your spaghettification, which is going to be very difficult in Scratch, or to actually start over and build it in a in a cheaper engine like Unity, in a cheaper engine like Unreal. And before people say that, yes, there is a, you know, there's a royalty with Unreal, there's royalty with Unreal, there is royalty with Scratch, which means Lava is supposed to be paying a royalty to Scratch for using it. I am assuming he is. I'm not going to call him a thief. I'm not going to call him anything on there because there is no proof. He, I'm assuming that he is following the proper legal stuff and you are supposed to be paying a royalty to Scratch for using it. So I'm assuming he is. So the whole royalty argument with Unity and the royal or the payment argument with with Unity and the royalty arguments with Unreal is out the window because you're supposed to do a scratch. But you need to hire someone to actually help you out with this on there because considering yeah, it might be scratched. Yeah, you're going to be having still running into slamming your head against the wall, but it's going to take a lot of stress off of you and you have the money to be able to do it. And you are making the money to be able to do it or at least hire another college kid. Considering Scratch is not complicated to learn. It is, like I said, made for literal made for literal fifth graders. You, you will very easily be able to teach a college student how to do this if it is made to teach elementary school students how to how to program. So there isn't an excuse there at all for not hiring underneath there, aside from you want to maintain control. Which again, I understand fully. This is your baby. You do not want another pe other people messing around with your baby, but you need to take stress off of yourself. You need to be able to keep hitting dates and building out the content fast enough because you're seeing the one-star reviews coming out from all the dates you are missing. You are going to see one-star reviews coming out, and even someone that loves your game, loves playing it, enjoys it, makes video guides, and started this entire channel that blew up out of nowhere just simply because considering I enjoyed playing your game. You're going to lose your audience if you keep releasing content like this. You have cut and paste from your actual stamps. Those aren't working because you literally cut and paste the code from what you had or even the blocks that you had had for previous stamps, overwriting and leaving doubles of the same stamps, meaning a brand new stamp that you've implemented for this patch doesn't even work. And you can't tell me you didn't know this or no alpha tester ever got a stamp throughout the entire thing and that... All your pieces were found 10 minutes before you were going to launch. No. He says, I'm calling bull on that. No, these were found. These were told to you. You knew about some of these. You might not have known about all of them, but you knew about, you knew about these. And they have hit you hard on this. 
you now have your stamps aren't implemented properly. Your actual statues that you've added in, your new ones on there, they don't do anything. They're actually coded cut and paste block code again of previous statues. So in other words, when you get the brand new statues underneath there and you deposit them in, guess what happens? They turn into older statues on there because you cut and pasted block code. This is... Yes, cut and paste is a huge portion of programming. I'll be the first person to admit that. And anybody who's programmed knows that control C, control V are your best friends. And there are huge swaths of code that is literally cut and paste. This is cut. This is part and parcel. However, you change variables. You just cut and paste and did not change any variables. Again, partially because it's scratch and it's a lot harder to go in and change variables or it's a lot easier to forget to change variables underneath there inside of Scratch than it is in other programming languages. But, you know, it is what it is. You've made your choice. You've made your bed. Now you're lying in it. It's a very hard situation that you are at. So I haven't even gotten into the a font immortal bug yet. And this is a bug that is a result of, I mean, you wouldn't have known about this at all, simply because considering you did your testing and your alpha wrong on there. You did your alpha testing on the live servers, which is a big mistake. You set up your actual testing on, not on live servers, but on the actual, a, uh, on a private one or a separate testing server. Now, this would have gotten rid of the having other alpha testers coming out with old star talents on there that were pre-nerfed and still having them. You got mad at some of these people, apparently, from what I have heard. I cannot prove this, but I have heard for using those old talents. Well, can you blame them? You didn't wipe any of their progress for World 3 underneath there. That's on you. You set it up inside of a private test server so that way it contains any broken, any bugged, anything on there that you might nerf down the road on there. And they don't get the nerf because considering they never upgraded because considering they get another piece and say, well, well I'm not going to upgrade to an item that, you know, is worse or I've done the quest, so I don't care about unlocking the next one on there. I, don't, I just keep going further. It's... Yeah, these are bugs on there that could have been solved with an actual close. And this is something you can do for the future for Wolf 4, is set up a private test server. It's not too difficult to set up on there, and you'll have contained a lot of these problems. And you can, you know, spawn and set up their own accounts and gear and whatnot for them. It wouldn't be too difficult for you to do. Now, in terms of the Afont bug and Mortal bug, what it is... Uh, to describe it to people is that once you kill the hands of a font a font becomes immortal you cannot kill him his shield well you can but his shield stays up and doesn't actually go away so what happens with that is you throw you know you can throw your potions at him but it doesn't matter what you do whether you do a million damage or whether you do you know 10 damage on there you're going to be doing 10 damage to a font every swing doesn't matter how much you're doing and a font's got a million hit points so you can do the math on there. Sure, you can brute force slam your face against the wall, but it's going to take you a long time. And people are losing keys on there, and people are told, you know, reset on there, reset, go back, reset, go back. But then they're eating their keys simply because considering they don't know how to. The proper way to get around that would actually be to actually do uh, save exploits. So literally, the only way for people to get around a bug is to abuse your save system. And that's just to save and preserve their keys so that way they're not wasting them. They only get a maximum of seven a day. So how how does that work? They only get up to a maximum of seven a day and, you know, they can't get through a font to even touch World 3. I'm not sure what caused this bug, but it is something that has to be brought up on there. And I'm sure that he has a hot fix coming out for it. Or even by the time this video goes live, it is up on there. But I still have to stress... This was out there, and it was never going to be seen because of the way you did your alpha testing. So for the future, do your alpha testing in a private test server. That way you don't get, you cut down on leaks, you cut down on hackers jumping their way, smuggling their way in, and you also run down on cutting out the actual problem of people using what you've now nerfed later down the road. Because considering I look at that and I say, I probably got things that, he says, I was never in your alpha, but I probably have things that were nerfed. That might have been nerfed down the road underneath there, but I've just never gone back to World 1 to change them. 
Why would I? I've, I like the things that I have on there, but who knows what you've changed since then. Now, another game-breaking, completely game-breaking glitch underneath here, and this is even far more egregious, far more worse and game-breaking than your actual... A, then your construction just deleveling because you can just ignore construction. You can ignore all of these pieces. You can ignore the totems. You can ignore all that till it's patched because eventually, yes, lava will patch these things. That part is true. This, this on the other hand, and for those of you who have seen my trapping video know exactly what I am talking about here, is a very, very easy sequence break. And this is why Scratch is horrible, because considering Scratch does not allow any of these go outside of the exact block. And so unfortunately, you're stuck in this exact block path, and Lab is going to have to basically slam his head against the wall to fix this, because what happens here is, if you do not talk to Hog and Dogs first and follow his quest line to go talk to the Hunter, and instead go talk to the Hunter, because considering you want to go and start your trapping first... You will have sequence broke the entire Hog and Dogs quest line and the Hunter quest line, and you are now completely 100% locked out of every quest on that character for World 3. That's right. No talent points. There are no star talent points on there that you're going to get from completing it. Uh, no additional you know, rewards. No tutorial for any of the other uh, mechanics and whatnot you are now 100% screwed simply because considering you decided to go and explore and talk to a NPC before you talk to another NPC. Yeah. Yeah. You are now 100% locked out of for that character and there's nothing you can do as of right now. Lava has to make a hotfix patch and as of recording this, he hasn't. I assume he will because considering he has been made aware and, you know, some of the moderators on there gave one of the worst advices I had ever seen. But you know what? They're a moderator. They're not actually programming. Or I shouldn't even say programming. They're not actually doing the scripting. They gave the advice of just make a new character. Not thinking that, well, okay, well, A, what if the guy's at 9 out of 9 characters? And B, the guy's making a solo character. In other words, he's got one character. So, let's say he, so he makes his new character. And it doesn't, lo and behold, it doesn't solve his problem. Yeah. You didn't do anything there because you're not actually solving the problem within the code. Within the code, it's tied each quest to a character, not account wide. In other words, he sequence broke the actual code. The same way that I had sequence broke the actual scriptus quest line to force the picnic guy to actually spawn, this is a sequence break that doesn't make a, oh, cool, see, so you can make a new NPC spawn that isn't supposed to. This is a sequence break that is. Anybody can find this just naturally by exploring and doing their own thing on there. And once they find it on there, can be 100% locked out of your game and expansion. Lava, I say this out of love. I say this out of respect for your, for your game. You should not have released this. You knew it was a buggy mess. This is why you had released it and put up a schedule and put all of these check marks saying, okay, I need to fix this, 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 and this. And this is why towards the end you had said and basically hemmed and hawed within 10 minutes of saying, oh, well, you know, my alpha testers are telling me it's not ready. My alpha testers are telling me it's not ready, but, oh, I got to release it. You, you set yourself up for failure with that. You said, I could probably get it done in this time, but no. You should have finished it. Set a release date after you finished it. Set your streaming date. That way you have all the stress in the world gone from you. And then you play around. And if you find another glitch or another game-breaking bug, you say, oh, hold on, guys. I got to fix this. And then you have a lot less on your table rather than all of these bugs. Because considering I'm willing to bet that you knew about all of this. That you, not all of them, sorry, I should say. I should correct myself while I'm ahead and even behind on here. I'm willing to bet that you knew about majority of these or that you knew of a ton of these bugs because considering you spent hours and even had said, I'm going to be spending four hours plus on here and I'm, I'm honestly, I'm not impressed. I actually think that this complete update was unacceptable. It was, it has borked people's accounts. It has borked on the actual pieces. Your general responses were just don't close your game. We're unacceptable. And you had made those responses before you released the game. 
you will be able to patch these eventually down the road, but the point is, is that you released it knowingly in an unfinished state. That is just as bad as Bethesda releasing unfinished broken games like Fallout. It's just as bad as a, uh, every AAA developer that leaves crap in there that's broken, knowing it's broken and still sells it. And worst of all, you were selling $300 worth of DLC. You're selling pay-to-win stuff inside of a borked update. To me, this looks like you created a problem, and now you're selling a solution. But you've also completely tied yourself up because you're using Scratch. And because you are using Scratch, this problem is only going to get worse. It will only get more spaghettiified. It will only get worse the further the worlds go. You gotta hire someone to actually help out with your actual program. You've got to be able to do that, or you've got to go back and be willing to go back to square one and start designing it in an actual engine designed to expand and designed to do this. Do not get me wrong. Scratch is useful for certain things. You can use Scratch for things such as an idle game, a small little idle game on there, tower defenses, you can build small little decent games in Scratch. There's nothing wrong with that. But you are trying to do the holy grail of gaming, an MMO. Well, granted, this is an MMO light. It's just more or less networking together in like a glorified chat room within Scratch. It's just not acceptable what you... It, sorry, not... Yes, it's not acceptable, but it's, it's just not the proper tool for the job. You're again trying to build a cor five course meal with an easy bake oven. Or inside of the trades, there, there's a good saying inside of the trades, and that is 80% of the work is the tool. You spend the money on the tool, and majority of your work is done for you. The quality is better. The basically you want to cut down and you want to cut down a tree, you sharpen, you spend 20 minutes sharpening your axe type thing. 15% is the actual knowledge. So knowing what to do, knowing how to, you know, chop down the tree. And 5% is the actual man to actually chop down the tree. The same applies for coding and programming. 80% of what you can do is tied down to the actual languages that you are using. Scratch is very limited. And you will be fighting the tool the entire time. You might have the skill, and I do believe you probably do have the skill, to make a actual MMO light and a complete idle game inside of another language. It's going to take you longer, but I believe that you have the skill to do it. But you're not able to use that skill. You are not able to take that 5 and 15% because of the 80% of the actual physical tool is holding you back. Now, I understand that there's now a sunk cost fallacy and that you are at this point kind of stuck with Scratch, and you would almost have to say guys i'm restarting the entire game uh, and whatnot and you may have to give some free gems to people if you did it that way but my recommendation would be most likely to actually start not over but because you can always recover all of your art assets and whatnot but i would start coding the back end again and working on it that way outside of scratch and working on it like that inside of an engine like unity uh, or unreal or any of those other free engines that you can get there's other html5s like i believe phaser is another free one that's very easy to use and whatnot it's an html5 engine though but you know what i've gone enough on this actual review there's a lot more inside of it and there is a lot more problems inside of the game but I've been rambling on and I do want to actually start talking about the things that I'm happy that you did. I'm happy that you actually went back and gave us more character slots on there because considering we were kind of limited. You also gave us a ton more storage space for free. And even though I do not think it is enough because you've now got a ton of new items for World 3... It's still nice that you actually were listening and added in a ton of free storage rather than just putting it into the good old-fashioned gem shop, which you could have very easily done. But no, you listened and you actually put it that way. So kudos to you. You also bothered to go back and add in the actual World 1 content. You reduced the cost of the actual mining, so the efficiency is no longer 
taking hundreds of thousands uh, compared to what it was before. So now people can actually hit those higher mining a lot easier. You've made World 2 mobs easier to hit and less accuracy requirements, meaning people are now able to hit actual damage numbers. All in all, you've done a good job with this update. And you've got the ideas, and you've got your heart in the right place. The problem I have with it is that it is completely borked. And it should have been delayed. It should not have been hyped up as you were doing it, because then you knew that it wasn't ready for it. You just thought that you could complete it in time. And I think that was a massive mistake. But you know what? I've rambled on enough and I probably lost a bunch of subscribers for this video because considering I've been talking about how much I'm not happy with this update. And I know that there's a ton of people that are happy and a ton of people that didn't experience a lot of these bugs on there because it's been inconsistent. So with this, I will say if you guys really did enjoy it uh, and if you guys want to see more complete reviews, just let me know in the comments below or let me know in the comments below if there's anything I missed like good or bad, pro or con, so the lava's favor or not to against lava's favor or not for lava, let me know in the comments below because considering it's always nice to show things that are broken, things that could be fixed, and even things that he did right. It's important to give both. So with that said, I will end this video here. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a like, a subscribe, and if you guys would like to help support the channel, down in the description below is a link to a coffee shop where you guys can toss me a couple bucks and buy me a coffee if you wish. And with that, take care everyone.